everybody, that's your life here, bringing you guys a brand new video. Today we are talking about the two, uh, well, two of the uh, TCG exclusives that have been revealed for uh, the Dark Illusion. So I believe this set is coming out very, very early August. Uh, I believe the sneak peek is July 30th, I'm not entirely sure on that. But anyways, uh, so two of the cards have been announced or revealed. They were revealed at a... Uh, the Nationals, and this is for the Sub Terror archetype. Now, I'm not gonna lie, out of the two archetypes that we know of that are gonna be TCG exclusive from here on out, that are like new and stuff, it, the Sub Terror, sorry, Sub Terrors, and uh, the Spirals. The Sub Terrors always interest me, always interested in me more than the Spirals, okay? I'm not a big Bond fan, I don't really care about spy films. Like, the only spy films I've ever really watched. Uh, were the Spy Kids movies that I watched as I grew up, so I, I don't really care about spy kind of espionage stuff. I mean, I like stealth games, and that's about it. So the sub terror cards are uh, is a much more intriguing archetype to me. Uh, they're supposed to be behemoths, and uh, as you can see, yeah, it's a behemoth, and you can kind of see a little person right there for size comparison. Uh, and a lot of people thought, okay, so Spirals are going to be the next Cosmo and BA, and Sub Terrors are going to be the next uh, UA and uh, Kaiju, where, okay, Spirals are going to get a crap ton of support, they're going to be really good right out of the bat, and Sub Terrors are going to be kind of just crappy until we get all, at least a decent amount to where we can play an actual deck of them. But judging by the rarities of these cards, I think it might be the sub terrors that Konami might be pushing on us, okay? Uh, so the field spell here looks to be a secret, just taking a guess, and that's obviously an ultra. So if you guys look at uh, UA and Kaiju, UA had no hollows whatsoever. No hollows, none, zip zero, none, nothing. And, uh,. The other deck, uh, crap, Kaiju, only had one hollow, and that was Kaiju Interrupted Slumber, and that's kind of irrelevant because it came out in one of the sets where, oh, supers are basically commons because they're so easy to get. So, this tells me that the sub terrors are going to be the deck that Konami's pushing on us, and judging by how good the field spell is and how good the first monster is, I can kind of see why. Now, uh, let, let's talk about the actual cards before we actually uh, talk about how meta-relevant this archetype could be, just by judging off of two cards. Okay, so, the Hidden City, the first field spell, well, the field spell for the deck, and the first card revealed. Uh, first and foremost, let me just say that artwork is beautiful, and so is this artwork. Like, holy crap, this deck. If the artwork maintains this level of quality throughout the entire archetype, it's it's going to be beautiful. <laughs> like, oh my god. Uh, and also, I'm getting a fairy Lovecraftian feel from that, uh, from the field spell. I, I don't know if that's just me, but the green and the undergroundness and everything, it just gives me a fairy Lovecraftian feel. So, it's a field spell, obviously. Uh, when it is activated, you can add one sub terror monster from your deck to your hand. Once per turn, you can change one face down defense position sub terror monster you control to face up attack or face up defense position. Once per turn, when an opponent's monster declares an attack, you can change one face down defense position sub terror monster you control to face up attack or defense position. Then you can negate the attack. You can only activate one the hidden city per turn. So immediately, this card has three really good effects. And, for, and it kind of reminds me of Oracle Zephyr, just because he activated it, he gets search. Uh, I think uh, the ABC field spell does that as well. Uh, so it's it's automatically a Stratos, which immediately makes it a 3 of in the deck. Uh, so the deck is all about flipping and stuff, and if you look, it's an actual flip effect monster, which is very interesting, which makes me want to play this <laughs> in, uh, in like a... Prediction Princesses, which I have no idea how well that's going to work, but I want to try it anyway. So, it, you can 
basically book a moon or unbook a moon one of your sub terrors once per turn. I wish that was a quick effect, but it's not. The other effect only activates whenever an opponent's must terror declares an attack, and then it's basically the uh, first effect once again. And so they are flip effect monsters. And it's a very good effect for a flip effect deck. Uh, we've had a total of three decks focused around flipping and around and doing that kind of stuff. Versus Ghost Tricks, they, uh, they were all stall based and not really all that. They didn't really have a very good, easy way of winning. They didn't really have much of a win condition. Yeah, they could make the occasional rank 3 or rank 1, but however, the deck had a really hard time just maintaining a board and going for game. It, it was a great stall deck, and so a lot of people used the uh, ghost tricks in stall decks and stuff, you know, like Final Countdown, Exodia, stuff like that, and I think there was even a ghost trick monarch deck for a while. So, it's going to be very interesting how Konami handles this archetype, uh, because the only other Flip Effect deck is, uh, or just like Flip of Oriented deck, is good old Prediction Princesses, and it's a ritual-based Flip Effect deck. Very, very good, but really best to use with other uh, archetypes. Oh yeah, and, and Shadows were a Flip Effect deck. I keep forgetting, because nobody really ever uses their Flip Effects, so there's four... Uh, one is was a meta deck. One is a really good low tier deck. The other two, uh, like sorry, uh, Ghost Strikes uh, were kind of just there. And then we got this deck, which I don't know how this is gonna go for it, but it's very interesting. Now, first monster, uh, Sub Terror Behemoth Stalagmo. Uh, it seems to be a poking fun. Like it seems to be like making a reference to like stalagmites and stuff. It does look like a stalagmite. It also, I don't know if it's just me. And excuse me, <laughs> I don't know if it's just me. But at the this thing kind of looks like Albus the Tormentor. Does it? It, it kind of looks like Albus. I, I, it just might be me, but it kind of looks like Albus. I mean, the horns, the bigness, the giant muscly hands, the wings, and I think it's got a tail back here. Uh, Albus doesn't have a tail, but it, it kind of looks like. <laughs> Kind of looks like Obelisk. Uh, even the same level, too. <laughs> uh, it's an Earth Rock level 10 flip effect, uh, 2800, 2100. So we can assume that this deck is going to be all rock based, it's going to be all flip effects, and they're all going to be Earth. Uh, and they're all going to have really high stats, or at least the uh, Behemoths. So the fact that they specified that this guy is Behemoth tells me that there may be some terrors that aren't behemoths, and that's mostly because of this little dude right here. I get the feeling that he might not be, like, he, he might be a future card in a, in this, in the archetype, I don't know, because the way that Konami was marketing this archetype is that they're all behemoths, uh, so these little dudes who might be the summoners of these guys might just be, like, making guest appearances in the artwork and not actual cards, which would be very interesting and is very reminiscent of, uh, of a little, uh, I don't know how many of you guys played Chaotic, but I loved Chaotic. It was my first, like, card game that I actually got really competitive in, and I was actually doing really well in tournaments and stuff with that, uh, in that, uh, game. But uh, in Chaotic, uh, one of the tribes, okay, and I don't want to get too into Chaotic, but one of the tribes, uh, the Mepedians, they had uh, a thing called War Beasts, okay, and Mepedians were never really an offensive tribe until uh, they came out with these guys, uh, the War Beasts, to kind of help out with that. And the War Beasts were giant monsters summoned by mages in the uh, Mepedian tribe. So this is kind of making me think of that. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna say that it kind of makes me think of that because you got the little dude. He appears to be summoning this. Unless he's gonna go and fight it, I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know who would want to go and fight that. Uh, so it's a double ten Earth Rock flip effect monster, 2800, 2100, uh, Subterra Behemoth Stalagmo. Uh, kind of a weird last, like, kind of weird actual name, Stalagmo. I don't know, it, like, it, it's, it looks like something to be feared, but it, Stalagmo. It just kind of makes me want to laugh and giggle. <laughs> uh, so it's a flip effect, obviously. Uh, whenever it flips up, you can discard one Subterra monster, and if you do, draw two cards. Uh, you can only use this effect of Subterra Bohemoth Stalagma once per turn. I like that, okay? So right off the bat, we have a draw engine for the deck. Uh, the only issue I have with this is that he is 2100 defense, and you want to have him set face down to get the draw. Now, obviously, you want to 
flip him over with the uh, field spell so he's in attack mode and has 2800 attack and then you get the effect to draw. I hope that sub terrors are able to benefit off of being in a graveyard. Like maybe there will be a sub terror that, oh, if you control a sub terror, you can special summon him from the graveyard and face on defense position. That would be really good to be able to really maximize off of this. Uh, so he has another effect. When a face up monster you control is foot face down, if you control no face up monsters, you can spell some of this card from your hand in defense position. Once per turn, you can change this card to face down defense position. So, okay. <laughs> uh, if one of your monsters goes face down defense, and obviously you're going to be like, uh, I, obviously Pokemon is going to be like mandatory staple in this deck, but also like the Hidden City, or it, or if you're going to try what I'm going to try with Prediction Princesses, one of your Prediction Princesses goes down to face, face on defense, you can just summon this guy in defense, and then once per turn you can book a moon him. And so uh, one guy, I was reading the forums, and he pointed out that they probably put the hard once per turn clause on this guy because you're able to summon him, book a moon him, and then flip him face back up with the hidden city, draw two, okay, discard a couple, well, discard a card, draw two, and then you're able to book a moon him again, and uh, then there's ways to flip him face back up. So you could, if they didn't put a hard once per turn clause on him, you could abuse this like crazy, and thank God it did. So this guy who's basically a D draw for the deck, I really, really like. Uh, now on to another topic I want to discuss with these guys. Uh, oh, by the way, so off of the first two cards, okay, and if these guys are the sub archetype that Konami's pushing on us, it's going to be these two and another monster, okay? Every single uh, smaller TCG exclusive archetype Konami has released. Uh, the first wave has always been two monsters and a field spell. UA, it was UA Stadium with a uh, midfielder. No, no, no. It was with Slugger and Perfect Ace, and then with Kaijus, it was Kyoto Waterfront with uh, Godzilla and Ma uh, no, not Mothra, uh, Kumongus. Uh, so, if this is the smaller archetype, it, we're going to get one other monster, and the deck is not going to be relevant at all. But, if this is the archetype that Konami's going to be pushing down our throats, like with Cosmo and BA, these guys are going to be getting at least three other cards, and... Depending on what those are, uh, this could be a really good deck. I'm not going to lie. This, this could be a really good deck. Uh, I could see it working really well with Prediction Princesses. Uh, the only issue with Prediction Princess, like with the Prediction Princess build, is that uh, Prediction Princesses like to have Tarot Tray and, attack and face up, and then all the others face down and flipping it up, up flipping and doing stuff. So. Stalagmo would not be able to be special summoned from a hand by ter because Terror would be faced up in attack mode. Uh, so there would have to be ways to get around that. Or you could just discard them and then use Terror Trade's end phase effect to bring them back from grave. Which is like my main reason why I want to abuse why <laughs> combine these two and abuse them. Uh, so, I don't know how meta relevant this deck is going to be. We're, it's too soon. We don't know very much about it. And we don't know anything about the Spiral deck unless, like, more stuff has been announced, which I don't think it has. Uh, yeah, nothing else. So, it it's hard to tell right now. But there's another thing I want to talk about, and that is what are these guys based on? Uh, every single TCG exclusive. Uh, archetype, starting with Noble Knights, has been based off of some form of entertainment, literature, or other thing. Uh, Noble Knights are based off of the stories and legends of uh, good old King Arthur. Uh, you had B.A., which is based off of Dante's Inferno, which uh, one of my friends went nut nuts over because he's a huge fanboy of Dante's Inferno. Uh, you have UA. Uh, actually, no, UA wasn't based off. Oh, wait, no, no, it still was based off of a form of entertainment in that it was based off of sports. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, then you had uh, Cosmo, which are a mix of Star Wars and Wizard of Oz, and the fact that Disney actually let that slide just still astounds me, unless they just don't know about it. And then you have Kaiju, which is well, Godzilla and Kaiju and stuff. So, a lot of people have been speculating, what is this based off of? Um, I, know, I know Konami uh, said it's something about Shambhala or something, but I I don't know what Shambhala is. Like, I think I heard about it in Full Metal Alchemist, 
one time, I don't know, with Shambhala. Uh, Shambhala in Tibetan Buddhist and Hindu traditions. Shambhala is a mythical kingdom hidden somewhere in hollow earth. It is mentioned in various ancient texts, including the uh, Tantra and the ancient uh, Zenghong uh, texts of Western Tibet. Okay, so it, it does uh, go hand in hand with the, with the uh, Shambhala thing in that it's a hidden uh, city uh, underneath ground in a hollow earth, as you can see, and then all that. But, I have another theory that they might be taking inspiration from something else. <laughs> uh, and god dang it, uh, Google Chrome, you just uh, spoiled it. <laughs> uh, so, I don't know how many of you people have heard of a little game called Shadow of the Colossus. Uh, Shadow of the Colossus is a video game uh, about this guy. Uh, he's unnamed until the end of the credits where they reveal his name, his name's a wander. Uh, he basically takes his dead girlfriend, wife, we don't know, just some lady that he seems to be in love with, uh, brings her to this uh, secluded, uh, separate, like, it's kind of like a giant temple in the middle of nowhere in a uh, place called the Forbidden Lands, and he makes a pact with a uh, god that is sealed away in that temple that if he goes and kills 16 colossi, he uh, will, the god will bring back the uh, girl who died. Uh, it's a very, very good game. Like, guys, if you have a PS3 or a PS2, go and get it. <laughs> it's well worth your time. Uh, so you gotta kill the 16 colossi. And I was kind of getting a Shadow of the Colossus feel with this. I mean, you have the hidden city, this temple in the middle looks in Oh, sorry, excuse me. It looks an awful lot like the uh, temple from Shadow of Colossus. You have these giant colossus monsters. Sorry, they use the word behemoth, but colossus, behemoth, interchangeable. And then you got this little dude with a sword looking thing who's like staring it down, I and mean, then he's either summoning it or he's getting ready to fight it. I don't know. I'm getting a very Shadow of the Colossus feel for it <laughs> from this. Uh, originally, uh, whenever they first like mentioned giant monsters and stuff, I thought, okay, Shadow of Colossus, and then they revealed the name of the archetype, which is Sub Terror. I mean, we jumped to uh, a, t a movie called Tremors in all of its sequels. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of Tremors. It's a great movie series. Uh, especially the prequel, which was amazing. Uh, but basically, Tremors uh, is about like these uh, things called graboids that live underground and like eat people and stuff. It's a very good movie. It's not a horror movie, but it has some scary moments. I highly recommend it. And I thought that Tremors might have been what they were insp taking inspiration from. But then, yeah, just kind of threw it out the window. Uh, so, Subterror looks like a really cool archetype. Uh, I, I'm getting a Shadow of the Colossus makes Lovecraft feel from this. Granted, though, yes, it is based off of Shambhala. Uh, I don't, like, nobody's gonna get that reference unless, like, you're either a history nut or a uh, mythology nut. <laughs> I don't think there's any stories based around it. I know, uh, I, for some reason, I reckon, for some reason, whenever I think Shambhala, I think of Full Metal Alchemist. I don't know why. Uh, anyways, guys, thank you all for watching. This video went on way too long. <laughs> I was expecting it to just be like 10 minutes at max, but we were pushing 20. Thank you all for watching. Have a great day. If it's your birthday, happy birthday. And guys, please be sure to check out my social links down below. You will find my Facebook, my Twitter, my Skype, my PSN. Uh, hit me up on whatever. Uh, oh, yeah, and I'm also on YGO Amino or Duo Amino. I don't know what exactly it's called, but it's Yu-Gi-Oh Amino, basically. I'm on there as well. Uh, Don't Tear for Life on there, and I'm going to have the link down in the description. Or, well, not the link, but like the name and stuff. I think I actually already have it on there. I don't know. I got to double check. Anyways, guys, thank you all for watching. Have a great day. Peace out, and see you all later.